Hey there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect. So I came across this online tool which automatically converts black and white photos to color using AI. Now at the moment of recording this video, this is absolutely free. If they begin to charge later, don't blame me because in no way, shape or form they have sponsored this video. Now you must be wondering how good is it? Whether it is something that we should be using in our daily workflow in coloring black and white photos? Well, that's for us to find out. So sit back and relax as we're going to be testing this platform with different kinds of images from simple portraits to complex portraits to portraits for different skin tones and even landscapes. Now, you also must be wondering whether it's going to be better than manually coloring in Photoshop. Well, spoiler alert, definitely not. It's not going to be as good as that. Manually coloring is a whole different art form and it's definitely going to be way better than any automatic stuff. But just for a little reference, we're going to be comparing it with this black and white image which I manually colored in this tutorial and it can take us anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes and we'll see how artificial intelligence competes with our human intelligence. So without any further ado, let's get started. Life is for living. Let's see Back in the magical world of internet and before we begin let's test our internet speeds now i don't have the fastest internet but it's kind of okay but let's test it first so that you can see the upload time is not affected by it so the internet is kind of decent 50 mbps kind of that number usually in the mornings it has about 80 to 90 to 100 it's pretty fine let's also test our upload speed so if you click on show more info, I love this website, fast.com. Upload speeds are pretty darn good, 90.92. It's okay. It's not the fastest, but it's going to work. Now, why did I show you my internet speeds? It will become relevant just in a moment. So we have these black and white images. If we try to just convert this one, let's have a look at this one first. Pretty nice, pretty simple portrait, not anything complicated. So let's go to our website. The website is actually imagecolorizer.com. Loads pretty fast. Now, if you try to upload that, if we try to drag it and drop it into that, as you can see, it's going to tell you that the file is too large. It should be less than 3000 by 3000 in resolution and 4 MB in size. So let's hit cancel. So what I did was I resized it. So 3000 pixel width, all of the five, just the resolution is different. If you hover over it, it's going to tell you it is 3000 by 2308. So let's drag it and drop it into the website. Now, before we start, let's watch the time. Now, keep in mind, the file size is not very large. It is just 2.56 MB, right? It should be uploaded in about two seconds, right? And that's what it usually takes in Google Drive or Dropbox or any other website. So we're going to hit start, but we will watch the time. So let's open a stopwatch. So it's a simple online stopwatch by timeanddate.com. So hit start, start on both the places and let's see how much time it takes. Well, it's taking a long while. I don't know what am I going to do till then. Maybe let's try playing the piano. But I'm not a master of it. I'm ju I just do it for fun. It's a hobby thing. Let's see what we can play. Some nice songs. <laughs> Wow, one minute has passed and even now it has not uploaded.
Oh, it's done. So I didn't see how much time it took. I'm going to post it right there. I was playing the piano. But anyway, let's just pause it. Let's go ahead and download that. It's definitely not as good as manually doing it, but it's fine. So let's save it and open it up in Photoshop. So back in the magical world of Photoshop, and as you can clearly see that it has colored pretty good. But if you look closely, there are lines here and there. I wish those lines were not there. It's okay. It's decent. But we could use it if those lines were not there. Also, there's one more issue. The issue is there are some areas that it didn't color or get it right. It's fine. We can always correct that. But those lines are kind of very hard to get past. Now, as you can see that the size is very low. It's 3000 by 2308. The original size was way larger. Now, this coloring is okay. It's not very bad, but it's okay. Is there a way to use it in higher resolution images? Actually, there is a workaround and I'm going to show you how to do that in second example. So for the second example, we have this portrait. We have taken a little complex portrait with the top of the face with a net on it. Let's see if it's able to analyze that, if the AI is able to do that. All right. So let's go to the website again. We will time it again. So let's drag it and drop it right there. And once we start, we will also have to start the timer. So let's open that. Let's reset it and click on start and start here as well. One of the things with this website is just like it's a little hit or miss. Sometimes it takes maybe 14, 10, 15 or maybe doesn't even upload it, cancels it. I think it's doing it. Finally, it's done. Six minutes, 18 seconds, 19 seconds, 20, 620. Let's pause it. It's about 620 and let's download this. And I'm not expecting very high results from it. And as you can see, our expectations were right. So let's go ahead and save this image as well to in color. And let's open it up in Photoshop. Now, as you can see, it did not consider the skin from above the net area. It just totally forgot it. But there are ways that we can correct it. Now, I promised you that I'm going to be showing you how can you use this with high resolution images. Once you have processed it with low resolution image with maximum 3000 by 3000, then what you can do is first of all, open the high resolution image. So if I go to that folder, I have my high resolution image. If I hover over it, you can see that it's 4,843 by 3632, right? So let's drag it and drop it into Photoshop. This is a much higher resolution. Now, all you have to do is to drop the colored version on top of it. So let's go to our folder, do in color. Let's drag it and drop it into Photoshop just above this, okay? And now it's already fit to the canvas. If it's not, you can adjust it, hit enter or return. Now this is the colored one. We don't want the details from this. We only want the colors from this layer. So how do we get that? Pretty simple. Change the blend mode from normal to, as the name suggests, color. Now you have details of the high resolution image and the color of the low resolution image. So now if you zoom in, you will have detail of every single hair right there, everything. Now, if you want to correct the color, if you want to take the color beyond that net area, it's very simple. All you have to do, you can use this as a base and then you can create a brand new layer at the top. You can take the brush and then hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and paint over it. Now, don't forget to change the blend mode to color. Now, as you can see, it's going pretty well, isn't it? All you have to do is to just extend it. You see where we are going with this? It's pretty easy. That's basically what we can do to correct it. But in this case, it might be a little difficult because it didn't get that area, but you can use this as a great base. Now let's come to our third example. What if you have something like this, a complete diversity group portrait? 
how do we get the colors and the skin tones right? Well, let's see if the AI gets it. Just to tell you a little story, while I was trying this yesterday before recording this tutorial, it was around evening and every time I tried to upload, it was 50-50. Sometimes the upload canceled, sometimes it did and it took a very long time and sometimes it didn't work with the 3000 so I had to reduce the resolution even more to 1500 and then upload it. But right now it's doing pretty good as compared to yesterday. So from my experience, this website can be a little inconsistent from time to time, but we can't blame it. You know why? Because it's a free website. Oh, it's done. It's processing. It's done uploading. So we're going to hit pause. Whoa, this time it was really, really fast. Today it's just working like great. I told you it can get consistent with time. This is a very fresh new website. So as soon as I make this video, there's going to be a lot of you trying to open it. So it might have some issues then, maybe now, at the time you're checking this, but just give it time, it might work. So let's click on download for a free tool. This is pretty decent. Look, it did get the skin tones okay, but if you look at some other areas like the arms and probably the shirt that they're wearing, well, we can't expect AI to guess the color of the shirt, but then again, it's kind of making it monstrous in some areas. Now, we can use this color as a base always and then begin from right there use the manual process but you can actually use this as a base at the bottom so that you don't have to work a lot more you can sample the existing colors and just correct the areas right so right click on it and let's save it as well now before opening it up in photoshop let's open the high resolution first so this is three let's drag it and drop it into photoshop right in there and we're gonna drop the colored version so let's go here this is the color version Let's drag it and drop it right there and hit enter. As you can see, not many details. We only want the colors from it. So change the blend mode from normal to color. Now we have the colors from it and the details from the high resolution layer. Now there are some lines. I just hope that's one of the drawbacks that I didn't like about this website that it creates some lines. Can we fix it? Well, we can try. We can try going to filter blur and then we can go to surface blur. We can try doing surface blur a little bit. So we can increase the radius a little bit and threshold accordingly so that the edges are maintained and it pretty much solves it. Hit OK. Yeah, it solves it. Here's the before with all the lines in there. Here's the after. And from the top of it, you can start correcting. As you can see, these areas, it didn't get the color right, but the rest of the areas, it's absolutely fine. So you can create a brand new layer and then you can take the brush. You can sample this color and change the blend mode from normal to color and you can just if you want decrease the flow to about 10 percent and then just start painting over here until you get the color right similarly right over here you can just paint over there and it didn't get the hands right as as you can see they look completely monstrous uh probably like frankenstein or something like that so you can just take a sample and paint on the hand as well with a higher flow and do it properly. I'm just doing it very fast, but you get the point. You can just try sampling different areas as well and go from there. And you can even modify the colors or you can use the process that I have created a video about. Check this out. But I have a feeling that you can use this as a good reference. Now we have to admit that there are actually a lot of faults. Look at her hair. It just got a little bit of skin tone. So we can just sample it and paint it and correct it. Right. This is a great reference. Now you must be wondering, are there any other websites that we can compare this website's results with? Well, there are a lot of websites and I did a quick Google search and let's check out the first link. The first link was from Demos Algorithmia. I think it also uses AI, but I'm not very sure. It uses deep learning. All right. These fancy names sound fancy, but let's see how good the results are because at the end of the day that matters. So let's just upload something, click on upload and let's compare it with the first example. Open that up and let's see how it performs in comparison to image colorizer. I think it will be a bit faster. I'm not timing it this time. This is actually fast. I tested it, but the results, my friends, is not very good. So here's the before, here's the after. It just blurred all the color. The color is leaking all over. It's so sad. It's just not good, not usable at all. Compare it with image colorizer. If we go to our results, which is one in color, look how much better it is. It's not perfect as well. It did not get some areas right as well. 
plus it has some lines but those are fixable and way better now coming to our fourth and exciting example where we compare it with our manual coloring so this is the image that we're gonna color and we have already colored it in photoshop manually so this is my coloring let's take a look here's the before here is the after as you can see a lot of layers, a lot of masks have been added to kind of color it. See how many layers, some color lookup tables, a lot of few saturation layers, curves, gradient map, and a ton of things. And after doing all of that, we have achieved such decent results. It's pretty good, isn't it? Now let's do the same thing with the AI. Let's see how AI does. Let's drag it and drop it over the same canvas. And there we go. So this is the result of manually coloring it. This is what I had done manually. And this is the AI result. I already told you it's not going to be as good. However, you can always use it as a reference. Manually coloring will always be the king, at least for now. And here's the reason why. It, my friend, is an artistic process. Even if some colors were not there, while the photo was being taken, you can add those colors. You can be artistic with it. You can just play with colors to add more drama to the photo. If you don't have a lot of time and you can correct it very fast in Photoshop, well, might be useful. But any day, at least for now, I'm going to choose the manual method. Now, there is one aspect in which I found this online tool really useful was landscapes. It does landscapes pretty good. Let me show you an example. Let's jump into the photo in Photoshop now to save time. I have already processed the photo through that online tool, imagecolorizer.com. And I have brought it in Photoshop over the higher resolution and changed the blend mode to color. And as you can see, it has done a pretty darn good job. It's not the perfect one, but it's pretty good. If you look at the stone, there are some, you know, dots here and there, but you can simply add a surface blur by going to filter, blur, and then surface blur. You can use the same values. Let's see how it goes from there. Maybe we can use this. Looks pretty good. If you scroll through it, it's pretty okay. You can try decreasing the threshold a little bit. This is fine. Hit okay once you're satisfied. And there you go. It has got good colors. Now on top of it, to make it even better, you can try adding color lookup tables. So click on the adjustment layer icon, then choose color lookup. And then we can choose something like foggy night. It looks really nice to me. Now again, this is too much. So let's decrease the opacity. Let's keep it at somewhere around 40. How do you feel about that? Now, if you want to add some warmth in the highlights, you can also do that by adding one more color lookup table and then changing the blend mode to crisp warm. This is pretty good, but we only want it in the highlights. So double click on the right hand side of the layer, take it away from the shadows by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all the way apart to make the transition smoother. Hit OK. There you go. Hit, here's the before, here's the after. You can decrease the opacity to about 40 or 50 here as well. Let's go about 50. And then again, on top of that, to add more yellowness to it. So you can add something like edgy amber. It's more of a golden tint. So let's go for edgy amber. And only in the highlights, double click on the right hand side of the layer. Do the same thing. Take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. You can break it apart as well. And then it's too much. Let's decrease the opacity to about 25. Let's take a look. So here was the black and white version. It looks nice. It's artistic as well. But if you want to color it very fast, effective way to color it by using a website called Image Colorizer. Whoops, let me keep it right there. You see, when we compare human intelligence with artificial intelligence, there's one thing we need to keep in mind. At the end of the day, who created artificial intelligence? So do you think we can use this tool? Well, in my opinion, there is still a room for improvement. But then again, we don't have the rights to complain. You know why? Because it is free. So can you use this tool? Maybe just for reference, maybe as a base color, right? Well, that's for you to decide. I hope I could show you something new in this video. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for helping me keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.